Hey guys, Pro1701 here, and today we are going to be looking at my list for the top 10 post Hinchcliffe era Tom Baker stories with the fourth doctor. Uh, because I was doing my top 10 Tom Baker episodes list, and I realized just how much of it is filled with his first three seasons seasons 12, 13, and 14, because that is pretty much the best era of Doctor Who ever, especially consistently, <clears throat> with consistently good episodes. There's only a couple episodes in that whole three-year run to me that just aren't great. Uh, really only one, I think, that's just bad. Um, so it's really easy when you're doing, like, you know, Tom Baker, Fourth Doctor, Best Episodes, to pull from seasons 12, 13, and 14. So I thought... What if I did a top 10 list of my favorite episodes from only Tom Baker's last four seasons? From the Williams era and uh, that one season from the J&T era. <clears throat> so every story from this list is going to be from seasons 15, 16, 17, and 18. Uh, at number 10, I have the Armageddon Factor. The final story of season 16 and the conclusion to the Key of Time. Um, I think this episode is underrated. I like it. Um, I like the villain in it. I like the little twist villain at the end with it. Um, I enjoy everything going on here. I like how, Tom, I actually like how Tom plays that scene at the end where he doesn't play it like super serious. He's still got a bit of his fourth doctor humor to it. I actually really enjoy that. Uh, I don't know if it needed to be six parts. But I like that, you know, you figure out early on that one guy in the military is being controlled. I like the little bit with the time loop. <laughs> he sets everything in to buy himself some time. <clears throat> I think it's a good conclusion to the um, key to time story arc. Especially considering season 16 doesn't have a lot of what I'd call really strong stories. But it has some good stories. It really is. There's just no standout story that season. There's... A couple bad ones, a couple mediocre ones, a couple good ones, basically. That's really how that season is. Good is about as good as that season gets. And I think Armageddon Factor is pretty good. I, I, t I seem to like it more than most. <clears throat> uh, number nine is The Keeper of Trocken, Tom's penultimate story. Um, and where we were first introduced to Nyssa and, uh, the, of course, The Return of the Master. I, I like it. Um... It's a nice four-parter. It doesn't overstay its welcome. I actually really enjoy Tom, and uh, I don't always agree with people that he's kind of slept his way through his final season. I actually really like him in his final season. Uh, he's visibly older, and he does act a little more older and a little more mature. Like, who knows, maybe off the scenes, he got had to deal with some part of the Time War or something. Maybe he got caught on the fringes of it, and that's why. His Doctor seems more somber <clears throat> this season than any other season. But I enjoy the story. I love uh, Anthony Ainley as Tree Mass. I love the, the ending there. I actually do like the fourth Doctor with Adric. Adric hadn't become annoying yet like he would get with the fifth Doctor. Um, and I just think it's a really good story. Uh, season 18 is very much its own thing. Um, there's not really another season before or after it that's like it. And uh, I, think, I think it's one of the best stories from the season. Not the best, but one of the best stories from the season. <laughs> <clears throat> number eight is the Ribos operation or Rebus Ribus I forget how you say the planet's name now this one is nothing stellar um and I was kind of surprised it made the list but I do find it fun I really enjoy Mary Tam's Romana I do like Romana 1 considerably better than I do Romana 2 and I like her introduction here and her her exchanges with the doctor when they first meet and are getting to know each other really helps sell this episode for me I do like the guest cast in this for the most part. There is that one guy who talks with that southern drawl sometimes. It's really annoying. But um, his partner, the one with the, the mostly bald, I like him, though. He's He does sell like a salesman, which I like. Uh, just overall, I like it. The guy who plays the main villain, the prince or lord or whatever he's supposed to be, the, the ruler is trying to get his kingdom back. You can tell he's a bit mad and wouldn't make a good ruler you can see why they deposed him so i just i like it um i think it's a good start to the season and i really enjoy 
the chemistry that Mary and Tom seem to have in those early scenes. It's either Romana or Fred. In that case, I'd rather be called Fred. Right! Come on, Romana. Yeah, I love little bits of humor like that. So it's a good start to the season. Number seven is the Sunmakers. Um, I really, I really enjoy the Sunmakers. To be honest, it probably should be a little further up on the list. Uh, this is definitely a story that I think is a little underrated. It's really good. It's a Robert Holmes script. I love Robert Holmes. You can tell he was very mad at his tax man at the time. Um, I think one of the characters overacts a little bit. Not the main one, but the one with the silly hat. But it's not enough to distract from the story. Just a little overacting. And it does kind of fit with uh, that story. But I enjoy it. It's nice to see a Tom Baker that's really good, that's not horror or gothic themed. It's just a good story. So I kind of like seeing a Tom Baker story I really like that doesn't have that kind of Hinchcliffe horror running through it. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Robert Holmes never disappoints. Uh, the, the actors all do a good job. Leela's really great in it. Uh, the guest actors all do well. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Tom has some really witty lines in it, which I enjoy. So yeah, check out The Sunmakers. It's uh, very underrated. Number six is The Pirate Planet, a Douglas Adams script. And I do love me some Douglas Adams. I really like the captain in this. He, it's like he kind of overacts, but it's in a good way. It's like they were going for a bit of a humorous spin on him. Mr. Fibley! Uh, absolutely. The captain sells this to me completely, which Tom's great in it too, but the captain really sells this one for me. And I love the ideas behind it. You know, a hollow planet that materializes around other planets and then just harvests them for all their minerals and leaves them a husk. And then he, that little contraption he has rigged up down there <clears throat> as a way of freeing himself from a predicament. The, the nice twist with the captain in that he's not actually in charge. He's kind of a prisoner himself on the pirate planet. And that he's trying to escape as well. Um, the, the story has a great conclusion. There's a lot of good Douglas Adams humor in it. Um, and Tom has some really good acting in it. That bit where he's like, But what's it for? I absolutely love that. So I, I definitely think it's my favorite episode of, my favorite story of season, of season 16. Again, not like a top 10 highlight if you were doing all of Tom Baker's run, but I think it's a really good post uh, Hinchcliffe story. Uh, number five is Legopolis, Tom's final story. I like Legopolis. It's not perfect. It has some things going on, and there's definitely some uh, science and math there that's not quite something the average person follows. But, um, you know, that, like, like the whole season, it deals with entropy. And uh, the doctor trying to f fix the chameleon circuit. Uh, you know, we really properly get the master back uh, with Anthony Angley's new version of the master here. And I like that we don't see him at first. He's kind of kept in the shadows. And Anthony Angley's master is usually a bit of a character or comedic, but he's actually pretty solid in this story, especially before he shows up. He's got a good buildup. But even when he shows up, he's not ridiculous in this like he would, like he would be in some of the others, which I don't think it's his fault. I think that's just how they had him play the character. Uh, but he's good in this. Tom is actually good in this. I like this. There's this sense of foreboding the whole story, like something's coming to an end. It's almost like a slow funeral march. But I actually enjoy it. I love the fact his doctor goes out basically saving the universe. That's pretty cool. You know, his final words are nice. His rege I actually like the regeneration itself. I think it's one of the best ones in the classic series. <clears throat> so yeah, Legopolis. Uh, number four is The Horror of Fang Rock. Um, again, this one feels like a Hinchcliffe story. Maybe it's because it is the first story post-Hinchcliffe era. So it has that kind of horror, gothic feel to it that I really enjoy. I, I need to watch this one again. I've only seen it once, and I but I really liked it. And it's interesting because it is one of those stories where... Only the Doctor and Leela make it out. You know, they have all these other side characters and they all die. It's one of those stories where you're like, people in Doctor Who die. But it's good. I like the um, the alien in it. I forget its name. But I like it. I like its abilities. I like how deadly it can be. I like how the Doctor stops it. Um, I really want to watch this one again sometimes. I really, I really hope the next box set we get is either 15 or 17. Because I'd really enjoy a chance to see this one again if it's 15. 
Uh, moving into the top three, we have State of Decay, <clears throat> the shining jewel of season 18. This one also, like uh, Horror of Fang Rock, um, feels like a Hitchcliffe era story. You can tell it's like a leftover script from years ago. Uh, but I love the fact they kept the horror themes in it. I know about how originally there were a lot of rewrites to make it more in line with season 18, and the guy who was directing it said, I'm not going to do this crap. So they went back with the original script, which I like. Uh, you got a lot of good stuff going on here, especially, you know, you got vampires, you got a king vampire, you have uh, the Time Lords fighting ancient vampire history. Um, some really good acting from the guest characters, especially the three lords. I really enjoy that. Um, the secret behind the castle and uh, learning all that and the secret behind who the three lords are and how they got there. It's, it's really good writing. I really, really like it. Um, and then, of course, like the, the ending's a little bit... The budget kind of lets down the ending a little. It, uh, it doesn't quite stick the landing 100%. But on paper, it's great. And the execution, it works. Uh, I think Tom is good in it. I think Lala is good in it. Um, yeah, it's definitely the best story from season 18. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Check it out. Give it a chance if you haven't seen it. Number two is Shada. I love Shada. Again, I love me some Douglas Adams. And Shada is a lot of fun. It's got a lot of wit to it, a lot of intelligent dialogue to it. I have really enjoyed the Time Lord's small talk. Because uh, we don't get to see Time Lord small talk really often. <clears throat> I love the professor. I love the professor. I was showing a shout out to my friend Ian. And we were both in agreement that we loved the professor. We were like, they should have just given the professor his spinoff show. I'd have watched it. He's just always making tea for people. Um, but I love all the acting performances. I love the animation they used to finish it. You get some really dynamic shots that you couldn't have done with live action back then that I think really benefit the story. The villain is really well done. Ah, just the dialogue is so cracking in this. I love good dialogue, and Douglas Adams is so good at dialogue. Shada is definitely underrated. I think I think it's right up there with my number one choice, which is City of Death, which I not only think is the best post-Williams story, or post-Hinchcliffe era story, but I think it's Tom Baker's best story, and I think it's Doctor Who's best story. I think, I think City of Death is the best Doctor Who story of all time. It's amazing. And I have to remind myself that it's not just completely written by Douglas Adams. There's actually like three people involved in writing this. But Douglas Adams, as somebody else has pointed out before, his fingerprints are all over it. And there's a lot of his dialogue in it. The scene when um, him and Duggan and Romana are first brought in to the Count's place and the Count and the Count's wife are basically interrogating him. It's probably my favorite scene in all of Doctor Who. I absolutely love it. Well, why was he following me? Oh, well, <laughs> you're a beautiful woman, probably. <clears throat> Doctor, who sent you? Who sent me what? Uh, that whole bit is so intelligent, so cracking. What a wonderful butler. He's so violent. You know, I, I just, I love that. It's, it's my favorite scene in all of Doctor Who. And there's just a lot of intelligent stuff going on here. And just the ideas behind it, that someone is splintered across time and there are various versions of him all working together toward a common goal and they can communicate with each other. It's a fascinating idea. And Julian Glover is great as the Count. He's just, he nails that. And I do like me some Julian Glover. So I was really happy to see that. Uh, the one playing his wife does a great job. It's just, it's just a cracking story. Um... I know a lot of people might think the best one would be out of the Hinchcliffe era, which is a fair argument to make, but I think City of Death stands tall. It is it is the one story, if you're pointing to a story that is like the best Tom Baker story or the best Doctor Who story that's not from Tom's first three seasons to show that uh, no, they still did good stuff after season 14, that's the story to point to because it's absolutely amazing. So those are my top 10 favorite Tom Baker stories, fourth Doctor stories, post uh season 14 with the Hinchcliffe era uh what do you think were there any of these that you liked was there any that i didn't mention you think should have been on the list are there a couple of these that are on the list you're like uh click uh well comment down in the comments below let me know click the like button click the subscribe button click the bell for notifications check out my main channel probable 1701 p-r-o-w-l 1701 where i talk about all things star wars most importantly stay safe and thank you for watching